Yo, what's up, guys? It's Del Dre. We are back with some more Fire Emblem Fates Lunatic Conquest. Last time we recruited Forrest as our first of the several child paralogs we have yet to do. And. Uh, man, I, I really just. <laughs> I really enjoy what they did with Forrest, still. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I do want to thank people who respectfully shared their opinions in disagreement. Because. That's honestly just. It's just that awesome. I I'm glad people can feel comfortable enough to say, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I disagree. And not have it turn into like a huge junk waving contest. That's the coolest part about this, I think. That said, I did disagree with like the main one, which seemed to be that. It seemed almost as if Leo was acting out of character for that whole scene. And I actually disagree with that. Although I do understand why it would seem that way. Or at least from my perspective, I guess. Because to me, right, it's pretty much uncontested that Leo is this character who operates solely on logic and reason. I, I guess I shouldn't say solely on logic and reason, but that's his thats his main thing, right? He's very calculating. Hell, his skill is called pragmatic, for God's sake. So I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that he's a very logical individual. So what could be more illogical than something that he doesn't understand, like cross-dressing, for example? And if there's anything that people dislike, it's things that they don't understand. That's something that you're going to see in anything, not just video games, but real life as well. If, you, if people don't understand something, they are much more likely to make snap judgments and be much harsher. Because they can't relate to it. I can't relate to being a crossdresser, but I can't understand the fact that people don't like what they don't understand. And it doesn't seem to me that it would be all that impossible to think that Leo could even fall into that same mindset. Especially somebody who understands the world through cold heart fact, basically. As far as I'm concerned, do what you want. If you're respectful to me, I'm respectful to you. That's that's just the bottom line. But not everybody is going to see things that way. And I can understand the disappointment of saying, oh, here's Leo, now he's an asshole. But I think that actually serves to make him more interesting than anything else. And I did see a very excellent comment that sort of insinuates that Leo's problems might not be wholly with Forrest himself, but rather... The perception of Forrest. Leo, again, a very smart individual, probably aware of bigotry and bias, sees Forrest dressing the way he dressed and says, No, 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 you're making us all look bad. You're making us all look bad by doing what you do. So it might not necessarily be that he cares specifically about Forrest's dressing habits or whatever, but it could also be that he's just trying to save face and is embarrassed because he knows that other people will somehow perceive him as weaker because of the way that Forrest is. And that was an interesting point that I never, I never really considered that angle of it, to be honest. So thank you to the person who brought that up. The one sentiment that I don't agree with, though, is that somehow Forrest is forced. Uh, no more than any of the other kids, really. I mean, I think we've all kind of accepted that Deep Realms are bad. The kids didn't need to be here at all. And they're essentially all shoehorned in for one reason or another. But I don't really think that Forrest... I don't even know if I would necessarily call his cross-dressing a gimmick at this point because it's not... It's not really what he's about. That's not his character. It's something that he does. It's obvious that he is a cross-dresser. But I don't think that that's the main point of Forrest as a character. So to call it the gimmick, I guess, sort of insinuates that there's... It sort of insinuates that that's all there is to it, and that's not something that I agree with. I, I definitely don't think that in the cutscenes that we saw for sure that it was used as a gimmick. Uh, if anything, I would say it was more used as a tool to show a different side of a character like Leo. So I if anything, he exists to develop Leo. For me personally though, I just, I love the fact that it's not shoved in your face. And you can say, but wait, it's so obvious. Well, of course it is obvious. Of course it is obvious, but the game didn't bend over backwards to make goddamn sure that we knew that Forrest was a crossdresser. It treated us with enough respect to assume that we do in fact have a functioning pair of eyes. This is no Camilla situation where the game is like, hey, did you notice that women have boobs? Yeah, we did. Trust me. Trust me, we know. <laughs> and the only time Forrest's whole deal is mentioned is in a negative light by Leo. Other than that, it's really not the focus of that whole situation. And that's what makes it handled so well to me. And the reason that I think that people may overlook Forest is because it essentially answers all the problems that people have with Fates. 
Albeit not with Corrin himself, it's through another character. It's through Leo. Leo is the vehicle for this. But if you look at that small little arc there, we had a character acting poorly, being called out for it, learning from their mistakes, and improving as a person. That's everything that happened in that scene. No? <laughs> that's how I see it anyways, and those are... That's basically a straight bullet point list of every single issue that people have with Fates. They say Korn doesn't develop, never gets reprimanded for his actions, doesn't really feel like he learns anything throughout the entire game, never really faces any true adversity. I mean, there's the whole King Garon thing, I suppose, but... It's not really the same thing. And for a game so focused around family ties, you'd think there'd be more drama with that. It's true that the Birthright siblings come along every now and again. I feel that they were able to do more with that one small paralogue than they were able to do with the rest of the 30 chapters combined in a lot of ways. And I'm not saying that, oh my god, they did something decent, let's praise Fates. No, I think they did something good. I think that that whole scene was good by Fire Emblem standards as a whole. Not by Fate standards, looking at the series as a whole. I think that it was handled well. And that's why I make such a big deal out of pointing that out or explaining my thoughts on that because if it was just okay in my mind I would have said that it was just okay you know what I mean I'm not really the person that you have to go reading between the lines to find out their true intent no if I say something that's probably what I meant <laughs> nine times out of ten anyways I hear this next map is supposed to be incredibly bonkers uh I guess we're gonna find out really quickly now we are doing it at the latest possible point, so that's that's supposedly what makes it so difficult from what I understand. I really don't have a whole lot of memories of Ignatius' paralogue though because I very rarely get him. Sorry Benny, I love you man. I love you man, but... Ah. <laughs> just training him up like that is just so painful sometimes, you know. We are going to jump right into it, but I, I did actually want to... I did actually want to call special attention to a comment once again from the chicken from Naruto because I love this guy for being such a great sport and I, I figured he would be because I knew that uh, okay so if you're wondering why I'm even bringing this up to begin with why this comment out of all comments it's because this was the guy on the possessed video that I used as an example to explain uh, some math crap because he <laughs> He made some comment, and I it didn't really get under my skin. I was just messing around with him, and I assumed that he would be adult enough to understand that it was just jokes. And sure enough, here he is, still posting positive comments. So shout outs to this guy for being awesome. <laughs> that's a quality that I, I really like when people can just, you know, laugh at themselves. I think that that's an important thing for just functioning as a human being, really. Let's just get into it. Now, in case you're wondering how you would get all of these paralogs, because I know you're seeing this entire list and saying, Wait a minute, you didn't train a lot of these guys. Well, there is a nice little trick that you can use with the My Castle feature, where you can find a battle where the person has left all of their units disarmed, and you can grind up support points that way. And in order to get around the one per hour limit, all you need to do is not update your data after every single battle. So basically, do all your support grinding, do all the grinding that you can anyways, and then hit the update button if you care about like the visit rewards and things like that. And you can do as many as you want, essentially. As many as you can find, basically. Oh, I didn't even unlock Azura, so I guess we're not, we're not throwing that onto this one, but I, there, there are some shorter ones. Like, we could do Kaze's and Azura's together, probably. That would be pretty safe, I would imagine. Anyhow, Paralogue 17, two defenders. Benny's son, Ignatius, is defending a village under attack by monsters. When Benny hears this, he rushes to his side and discovers his son fighting bravely in combat. Let's do it, man! I'm glad we got Big Benny laid, though. Dude deserves- Did you see that ending? He just spends all of his time frolicking with his animal friends. <laughs> what? Dude's like Snow White or something. <laughs> uh, I don't really know too much about Ignatius, so... I'm curious what his character is. I, I can't really remember, to be honest with you. Phew, I've been marching along for what seems like forever and a day. But it's not much farther until I reach Nor. I hope Father is glad to see me. But the closer I get, the more enemies I see. It's trouble everywhere here. I hope I'm able to reach him. I'll be fine. 
I'll be fine. Just need to keep telling myself like this. <laughs> My name is Apollo Justice and I'm fine! <laughs> There's a reference that no one's gonna get. <laughs> I'm not a child anymore. Help! Help me! But he is. Help! Help me! What's please! Wrong? What's wrong? You look as if devils have been at your back. <sighs> oh, far worse! Devils we can fight! Our village is about to be invaded by enemies that go unseen. Yeah, here's an idea for you intelligence systems. I got your next lunatic plus mode right here. Here's what you do. Enemies have the same amount of stats as lunatic, but now they're all invisible and you can't check their stats. Get on it. I want to see that in three houses. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, now that I'm actually thinking about it, since people had asked me in the past if I'm like keeping up on three houses and stuff, and since the only time I addressed this was at the end of a nearly two hour video, I just wanted to put it out there that the only three houses stuff that I have been following was the very first trailer release. The one back last year in the summer. That was the only one I've ever seen, that's the only one I'm going to see. So I'm sorry if you expected news updates and things like that the whole way, but that's not me, G. <laughs> that's not what I'm doing. I, I learned that I find much more enjoyment out of playing games totally blind and experiencing everything firsthand for the first time, rather than to know everything there is to know about the game. It takes away from it for me. And if it takes away from it for me, it's going to take it away from you guys as well when I get to that playthrough. So that's my reasoning. Hopefully, we're only five minutes or so into this video, so more people will probably be aware of that. But anyways, uh. invisible enemies. Oh no, what will you do? I mean, what can I do? I'm Ignatius, son of Benny, one of Nor's most formidable knights. You can have confidence in me. Come on, come on, look her in the eyes. You're a knight, damn it. Oh, so his thing is, right. he's unsure of himself, I take it. All right, you two run past. I'll stand my ground here and fight them off. I swear that I won't let them inside, but summon more help if you can. What? What? But they'll be here soon. By the time we find help, you'll be dead, supposedly. <laughs> no. No, I'll be right here fighting, but go now. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Stay calm. Stay calm. Stay calm. Deep breath. Now another. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. He really is. It's Apollo Justice. What? <laughs> That's great. I love that guy. I've got my silly little charm after all. That's always kept me safe. Best present father ever gave me. Wish he would have spent more time with me though. <laughs> oh, you burly fellow. We need your help. Our village is about to be attacked. Some brave soul is standing guard alone to fight them off. He may be a knight and he's got the courage of ten men, but he'll be a goner. And then, our village will be wide open to those fiends. <gasps> huh, what's that? Who was he? <sighs> we don't know. He said his name was Ignatius. I think he was scared. But he didn't want to show it. Ignatius? Yeah, he is. He's unsure of himself. Why, though? When Benny is your dad, I'd be the most cocky mother. <laughs> I'd be the most cocky guy around, dude. This beast of a man? Man, nobody would mess with you. Could you imagine having Benny charging head at you pissed off? I don't care what his stats say. No, thank you. That's not a fight I want to take. <laughs> Ignatius, you say? Yes. Yes, he said he was the son of someone. Flenny? Denny? Penny? It's Benny, you ass! Some knight of Nor. <gasps> no doubt, it's him. What's he doing putting himself at risk? He should have run too. I'm coming, son. Oh, yes. And with the vengeance of 10,000 men. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You really want to make an enemy of this guy? I don't think that you do. What I'm thinking we're going to try to do is save our boy ASAP. Because he does, in fact, start in a horrible spot. Like, a, the worst possible position. Right, so Ignatius over here. His mother is Effie, by the way. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. There's only one girl, I think, that went unpaired. Any guesses as to who? But Benny over here... Uh, not Benny, Ignatius. Benny's son starts in an awful position, as you can see. Look at all these guys. They're going to come right for him. I just know it. I just know it. I'm probably forgetting something like some crazy reinforcement or something like that. I didn't really I didn't really look at the map like that. But I think what we're going to try to do is have a small group break right. Try to get over to Ignatius as soon as possible. Leo is going to kill all of these guys because he can. I'm sorry, I thought Benny was the general here. But no, look at Leo's defenses. Look at Leo's defenses. I haven't even really taunted him up or given him the horse spirit. This guy is unkillable. Bottom line, you can't beat Leo. It's impossible. These paladins. The thing with these Grey's Knights, though, is that they can they can get to Ignatius in two turns. So, it's going to be tight for sure. Let me save. All right, let's just give it a shot, man. Keep the enemy out of the village is the goal here. And also, you have to route them as well. So, 
the thing is, you might not even care about Ignatius, but if he dies, that means that the enemy is probably about to seize. So, you can't let that happen no matter what, is the bottom line here. So, Ozu, get to it! Man, she might camp out a level this map. That'd be sweet. That would be sweet. This girl has been putting in work all game long with that giant chicken to burn. She's probably one of my highest leveled units in all seriousness. Didn't she get to like level 16 before she promoted? Really high at any rate. Did I not? Oh, I didn't rally yet. Hello. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Good thing Moser didn't need the help. What? Okay, lightning it is. What have I forgotten here? Oh, I didn't... I bought the speed tonic and then didn't give it to her. Golly. What a good player. <laughs> Doesn't matter, we have lightning. We have lightning, and the next thing that she's gonna be fighting, I imagine, will be like Great Knights, right? That was a little bit too easy, I agree. Now, with the auto giving us some nice crit evade, we only have a 1% chance to die. Same bonus as a bronze, let's. Or a bronze anything. So, unless he 1%s me at a 34% hit, we're good. There we go. Nice one, dude! <laughs> that went well. Just maybe next time dress for battle, huh? Yeah, like it's just a fate's problem. Like it's just a fate's problem. Ever try riding horseback doing aerial tricks in a miniskirt? I don't think that's a good idea. Matter of fact, for good measure, make sure you come from the land of snow too while you're doing it. Yeah, that's logical. <laughs> Let's throw Percy right there. That should be one ninja, yeah? Yeah, that's one ninja. Now, of course, we don't want to be getting hit too much by those guys, of course. We don't want to get hit by them too much, of course, but... Oh, let's see here now. Right here with Leo. Yeah, yeah, this should be a good spot. So now we can get him all the way over to these other guys. And I didn't even do the calculations, I just know that he's gonna win. I know for a 100% fact there was no need to check anything. Leo's got this in the bag, come on. Paired up with Forrest too, man, oh man, this guy's got like 40 res. <laughs> I'm almost kind of fearful that he might be too tanky though. I, I want these guys to attack him, right? Obviously. Oh, he's only got 38. <laughs> yeah, only 38. My bad. Only 39, 38 defenses. I don't understand why people think Leo's not that good. Are we seeing the same thing? Who needs Who needs Benny? I'm sorry. Benny, I love you, dude. I really do. Cool guy. But wouldn't you rather have those exact same defenses and then also have a really good 1-2 to two range spell? I don't know, man. <laughs> Seems like Leo is the one who actually invalidates the Armor Knights, not Camilla. <laughs> At least she has a bow weakness, so technically there's some areas she can't go immediately. But Leo, man, the only thing holding this guy back is the fact that he can't move that far through terrain. Percy, on the other hand, total god. But what else is new, right? Did we expect anything else from that kid? Nice. Nice, Leo. I don't know if that was really necessary, but sure was embarrassing. I like how these guys are getting up into melee with him, too. I think that might be because... Oh, because they're trying to take advantage of the, the terrain, but of course. But of course. Yeah, that makes sense. So speaking of which, th there is something that I noticed about this map, in that a lot of the tiles actually aren't plain tiles, even though they totally look like they should be. They're actually a special tile. Where you can't move through it very far, I guess... I'll make a better effort to find some examples of that, but you're not actually in as bad of a spot as it might look, because the enemies can't move everywhere. They can't move everywhere. There are plenty of plane styles too though, it's just, it's really hard to see them. I can only imagine the pain of somebody who's like colorblind or something, for example, because this would be awful. This would be awful. All these guys are coming in, so that's a lot of guys. <laughs> That's a lot of guys, man. Now, Azura is gonna pair up with Xander. Yeah, right here. Right here for Camilla. And she's carrying Benny. Now, you can actually recruit most of the kids by talking to them with their parent, which is exactly what we're gonna try to do now. Because fortunately for us, Ignatius does still have that off streak seal. Oh, I meant to give, uh, I meant to bring some more stuff for uh, Ignatius here. Yeah, I definitely did. Oh well. Let's get this talk done. Have no fear. Have no fear. Dad is here. Don't come any closer. Don't come any closer. I swear I'll cut you down where you stand, you big oaf. You are not getting inside this village. Um, whoa, it's me, son. You know, me, Dad. 
Haven't seen you in a while, so I understand the confusion, Father. but... Oh, you're right. Father, sorry, I... I didn't know you were here fighting, too. And somebody did bring up how it's awfully convenient how we just happened to show up at the correct time with all these kid paralogs. Yep. Yep, that's a deep realm issue. <laughs> that's why they shouldn't exist. I didn't know you were here fighting, too. Ah, oh. uh, of course, son. Came running as soon as I heard you were in trouble. Oh, look at the <laughs> look at Penny. What? <laughs> no way. Oh, come on. How could anybody hate this guy? Look at him. <laughs> that is like the exact opposite. Normally, he just looks so fierce. Like, you would never mess with this guy. <laughs> he looks so gentle. Oh, man. He really is the best character, isn't he? Besides Leo. I love it. <laughs> man, that threw me off. I'm going to make all their heads roll far, far away, where they can't hurt you. Please now, step back. Dad's going to fix all of this. I won't. I won't, Father. I can't. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Do you see that? Do you see his face just change instantly? You can even see some, like, vein. Oh, no, that's a scar. I thought that was a vein. That's a scar, isn't it? Why does this guy keep getting more badass by the second? Oh, my God. Mm, can't? I, I can help. I, I can help. I must. It's time that I do my part. I can't be scared. You've protected me for so long. Now I must do the protecting. Has my little boy grown up? Already. Ignatius? Ignatius, are you sure you want to join your dad on the field of battle? Yes. God, I can't get over that sprite. That's perfect. Yes, it would be my honor. Let us defend this village together. If we're going to do this, that. I guess I could give him an axe, right? Don't see why not. Ooh, I meant to rally Camilla. Not like it matters, we have the beast himself, Ignatius, right here. So I'm going to equip Camilla with the hand axe just to get the chip on those two ninjas coming in hot. I gave over the steel axe to ya boy, Ignatius. And we're just going to... I can actually leave him right there because that'll pull both the ninjas this way. Yeah. But yeah, you can see these mages have to go through these waste tiles, so you've got a bit of time. I'm not sure how much exactly, but more than enough. So we'll equip him with that javelin. Stand his butt right here and use the offspring seal. Oh, his stats are actually pretty good, huh? Yeah, not too bad, kid. And the thing is, if I leave him right here, if they choose to attack Ignatius, I'm pretty sure that he and Camilla will just dual attack them to death. So I'm I'm feeling pretty comfortable with this move. Maybe if I was sticking a little bit harder, I should have brought him a hand axe or something, though, just for the weapon triangle. I was going to give him, like, the beast killer and stuff, just so that in the off chance those green knights came right over to him, he might be able to poke him to death. I wasn't expecting this either. I gotta keep it a buck. I didn't use Benny or Effie, and he's still really, really good. Hell yeah, look at all this. Oh my god, is there anything else you would like to get, Ignatius? Dude just got everything. At this point, I'm gonna throw the uh, Calamity Gate on Leo, because this guy has a beast killer. And in case you're thinking that's dangerous, no, no, no. No, no, no. Leo's defenses negate the beast killer. <laughs> so all he can do is his strength and damage, basically. If he even decides to hit. Yeah, I definitely meant to rally Camilla first, so that she would be one-shotting these ninjas, in which case I would have moved Ignatius away. Maybe they wouldn't have even attacked her, though, because they can't do damage. <laughs> now, with this group, it's a little bit easier now, isn't it? We got the armor slayer. We can just go ahead and pop this guy right now. Elise can surely double a great knight, even though I forgot the tonic. Not a big deal. As we saw, it made no difference. I won't surrender. Goodbye. And good night. Sweet. Don't even need to take the damage on Sorry. dude. That's pretty cool. I don't know how much that'll matter, really. But can't throw him down there. There's so many mages. See, yeah, he's got a hang tight, I think. Maybe just take out the hero or something. Uh, we'll we'll bolt X on, on this guy. Which will savage blow the other. Which will mean the Mozu can kill him. Yeah, makes sense to me. No, we are not. We've got like six more of these pair logs, dude. Come on. Yeah, that's definitely Mosu range, if I ever saw it. Yeah, who do you think you're talking to? That is level 20 Mosu coming up hot right now. <sighs> Not bad. And there it is, max level Mosu. Hit points, luck defense. Yep, that is a little bit better, but... I don't know, was there anything that she really... No, max strength, max speed, max skill. Really bad defenses though because that can that can kind of go either way honestly and this one turned out to be not so hot no it definitely makes the most sense to go nowhere 
because this guy will die to me, right? With the forge? Yeah, he will. He doesn't have any crazy skill. No, he, he just straight up dies. So that is exactly what's about to happen here. We kill one paladin, which is good. I don't want him to be frozen, though. So just hang tight, man. We don't gotta be anywhere super quick. It's a route map. We already got Ignatius covered. I mean, that's Camilla over there. So really, what do you think is about to happen? Honestly, in your heart of hearts. <laughs> yep, that's about what I thought. Of course, she is gonna start taking some strength penalties if she starts getting hit here too many times. Which wouldn't be great. Yeah, they don't even attack Ignatius, realizing that they would die if they did. So there goes three of our strength. Sadly. Wait, <laughs> what am I saying? These guys don't have inevitable end. Oh god, it's a good day. It's a good ass day. <laughs> Have you ever been so conditioned to the game just kicking your ass that you just assume that all maps are that hard? <laughs> so even if Leo was somehow in danger, he has a shield gauge. And as you can see, this guy does no kind of damage. The rest of them do even less, and they all die. So that's just great. And since they froze Camilla, I can honest to god move Leo next turn, can't I? Because Azura's within six spaces of him. And if I need to move him, I can just switch over to Horus move Leo that way. Maybe get some heals or whatever. Yeah, this is looking like we've got a pretty good grasp on this, I feel. Hell yeah, man. I agree, Leo. I agree. Poor showing. 11 damage, you say? That's a silver weapon. It's a silver weapon. I didn't realize he was still using a bronze lance. What happened? What happened? Leo happened, that's what. God, that face looks like it's coming for his soul. Calamity Gate is a wild spell. Gotta say. This guy's done for. Two hole damage. He doesn't even have a defensive pair of See, this is what I'm talking about with the kids being busted, by the way. <laughs> Ignatius is probably one of the lower end of the kids. And even he is really goddamn good. He's really good. He's basically a slightly slower Silas. He's like what Silas would have been if I had made him a great knight. But with way more durability. I think that's because the kids always have their average stats, though, at worst. Whereas the rest of your characters can be screwed so easily. If luck is against you. I say... It's time for Ignatius. Let's go, 74%. It's about to hit, for sure. For sure, yep, we got him. Good night, kid. How did I do that? Yeah, how did you do that? It's almost as if you had an item within your inventory that would allow you to gain... <laughs> Undone amounts of experience at a whim, but you would probably refuse to use it if I didn't grab you, huh, kid? <laughs> There's something about the kids that I do not understand. I know that the offspring seal is just a game. It's just a gameplay thing. It's a good gameplay thing, in my opinion, because there's not really a whole lot of units in this game, so they're almost like pre promotes because of that. But it's just so silly that Ignatius, honest to God, would have just let himself die rather than use the offspring seal sitting in his inventory. Because he would, make no mistake, if we didn't get over there to him, he would probably be dead. If not now, then very soon. I think I want to just send Leo in again and have everybody else go hard right to deal with the mages. Because once again, Leo is unkillable here. <laughs> There's no way. Or I'll switch to Boris. Yeah, and then I'll dance with Azura. And then, we can move Leo all the way in here. Oh, we can't even really get into the range like that. But I am going to just honestly leave Leo out there. Why would I do anything differently? No, <laughs> seriously, I'm looking for the reason. And uh, I'm coming up short here. Leo... No, he has a spear, that's right. So Leo right here, then. And if those guys want to take advantage of the terrain, then they have to get hit with Heartseeker. So it cancels out. And between shield gauges and everything else Leo has going for him, namely his insane stat line, <laughs> he should be fine. He should be absolutely fine. Oh yeah, I forgot, he has Life Taker, so yeah, he's, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way he dies, huh? Yeah, we'll just pair up these two and start heading out over this way. I'll drop Dude off, though, just so that they have they, they have multiple freeze targets, basically. So I'll probably nail Percy and Camilla if I were a betting man. But that's just as well. We're out of range of that ninja. Again, it doesn't really look like it. It's so unclear. It's so unclear. But, I guess that's what the enemy range features for, right? <laughs> nice one, Percy. Hit point speed, defense, res. That's a good one to go out on. Definitely a good one to go out on. Better than Leo's and Mozu's. 
So this guy is gonna get totally blocked here by Justice Incarnate. Nine. I had it in my head that these guys all had inevitable end for some reason though. They're not even coming for me. They're they're afraid. And as they should be, if this guy wants to come in from the back, a uh, dude is waiting for him, so let's just kill him. I'll pair Rally Man with somebody, run over to Leo. Or I, I could probably just dance Rally Man, right. Right. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I mean, did we really expect anything different from dude? To be honest. Yeah, I can just dance Rally Man. What am I saying? No need to send all of my flyers back. I do want to uh, take out those ninjas. Not ninjas, but dang old uh, mages. Lots of mages coming in. So we can do one of those moves. If I really wanted to, I'm sure that she would survive, but that's not a necessary move. It's just not. So instead, she shall kill this one. No, she shall not. She shall kill this mage. Yeah, she'll kill this mage because... Not mage, maid, duh. Because that way I won't be frozen next time. Like so, goodbye. Hand X into... Ignatius kills this guy, pretty sure. Maybe I could have gotten Percy in on this so that he would just one-shot him. But I don't really need Ignatius like that. I'd rather try for this. Nothing lost, after all. I hope he one percents me just so I can laugh at it. Ah, oh, we we kill him. Lame. But if I just use the horse spirit, these guys can still injure me, so I'm gonna attack the boss with Leo. Because this increases the chances that I end up killing him, basically. Like that. Because now I only need to hit him with one thing on the next turn. As assuming I hit him again, but since we have four chances, it's pretty likely that all things considered he's gonna die. Do one of those. And we still do have to protect the village. That is a lose condition. What? What a fool! Come right into my range, why don't you? Oh my god. Oh my god, this guy. Has ever there been a unit as broken as Leo? That's all I want to know right now. He's about to kill all of those guys and take like four. Four. <laughs> That's insane. Oh my god. Just let them get the hit, man. You don't have to. <laughs> we get it. You're good. What are you trying to prove, Leo? Who are you trying to impress? Was that all? I don't understand. No, you're wrong, Deltra. I'll never take four damage. That's much too much for I. Oh, he's gonna take seven, I guess. Maybe. Will he? He will. Okay. Okay, fine. It tickled a little bit. But uh, ultimately, I mean, this is just a slaughter. We know it's going to happen. Leo's going to kill each and every one of them. Every single one down to the last. What a fantastic unit. What a fantastic unit. He's probably the best one I have. If he could fly, he'd be... Oh, man, it'd be done. It would actually just end on the spot if he could fly. Oh, hello. Here's how we do this. Yeah. So now I'm just going to switch Azor over to Percy. Percy's going to dance for Leo. Hell yeah. See, this is more like it. This is what I wanted all along. <laughs> Who the hell is Corrin? I just know Leo. I only know Leo. Leo, kill him. Kill this man. Crush his soul. Like so. I mean, I guess maybe Mozu can get cheeky or something. I don't know. I don't know. If I can kill all these guys, obviously I will. Good night. I don't know if I'm seeing it, though. Uh, Camilla gets this guy who's closest. Well, I mean, yeah, if I pair them up, but... On the other hand, I can't kill the third, then. I can't kill the last guy. Basically, because Elise can't do it. She's not in range, sadly. Now, what I'm really fearing here is for there to be, like, 20 reinforcements, because you just know. You just know. Since nobody can die, though, I'm just going to let them come to me. Even if they hit Camilla, it doesn't matter, because the last guy cannot reach. They don't. Cool. No reinforcement? Hell yeah, man. I wish I would have had Ignatius a little bit closer here, though. Not gonna lie. Uh, can I rally him out up? I can. Let's see if he one-shot stuff. You think this kid can one-shot the mage? I'll bet he can. I will bet you that he can. Let's try it. Ah, oh, not quite. Man, why didn't I bring him, like, a real weapon? Ooh, he totally can. I say he's this good. I say Ignatius is this good. Let's go! 
Let's go! 57! He's not that good. Help! Unless he dodges, then it, in which case it cancels out. Oh, take the hit head on, why don't you? Why didn't you dodge? It's almost like he had an 87 hit rate. He can help out Moses. How about that? He can help out Moses. Oh, this guy is very dead. Could not be more dead. Oh my lord. I'm saying die already, he says. Uh, save is kind of a strong word there, Mozu. Leo or Camilla? Like it matters, they're both capped out. <laughs> oh, I guess Leo can't do it, so Camilla it is. Say night-night. Please get the crit. Ah, I just, I just like seeing the crazy damage numbers, I won't lie. It, it makes me wonder what would have happened if Radiant Dawn showed the full damage, though, you know. Could you imagine... Okay, here, here's, here's like the most damage that I think would be possible, okay. Like a soul horse slayer crit from Titania or something like that. Or, or like a stun horse slayer crit from Har. How much damage do you think that would be if the game actually showed it? Oh my god, here, no, here's what it is though, right? Here's the most damage possible in Radiant Dawn. An Eclipse crit from the Black Knight, right? I wonder how much damage that would even be. Like how many hundred points do you think? 400 or more, probably, <laughs> no lie. <laughs> no, it would be. It would be at least 450 damage if you could pull that off. Jesus Christ. The numbers in this game get so ridiculous. <laughs> and I think Radiant Dawn started it. A lot of people say Awakening, but no, 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 no. The game just didn't show the damage in Radiant Dawn. That's why people don't notice that. But I noticed that. That game is ridiculous. Every single skill in that game was a different version of Lethality, except for Bane for some reason, which is why stealth is awful. Seriously, imagine being the one guy in the game where everybody gets an instant kill skill. Imagine being the one guy to get a skill that reduces them to 1 HP instead. And it can also go off on hits that would have ordinarily killed, so you end up not killing them. God, I love so- I don't know how we got to this point, but here we are. So honestly, guys, I gotta keep it a buck with you all. I really don't think it's that bad to complete. I- I really don't. I know I- I say some really wild crap sometimes. In jest, obviously, like what I said, I didn't understand why people thought Endgame was hard. Of course I understand why people think that is hard. But this time we were just like freestyling, basically, and that, that worked out well, I feel. The big thing that I could recommend is to just get Ignatius immediately and instantly promote him. If you happen to be getting him later into the game like this. Only really takes two flyers to do what I did. Not a very tall order, I don't feel. One thing I will say, though, is that... I sort of understand where a lot of people are coming from when they don't necessarily want to adopt a faster paced playstyle because most people came in with either Fire Emblem 7 on Game Boy Advance or Fire Emblem Awakening. And those games do not really... <sighs> like you can play them quickly, but it's almost sort of in a way missing the point with, with Awakening more so than Fire Emblem 7. Because... Awakening is not the game that you just blast through because that's not what the game is about, you know what I mean? Fire Emblem 7, you can blast through and it's actually much harder when you do. But, that's not what a lot of people enjoyed about those games. So, here comes Conquest, right? <laughs> a game that I swear, I swear to you this, okay. Conquest is a game designed by people who played the crap out of the Game Boy Advance games, sat down, Figured out everything broken with them, and then made damn sure that none of it would work. Basically. So every strategy that most people, I imagine, use in... Uh, Fire Emblem 7, Sacred Stones, things like that, none of that works here. None of it. And if those are the only games that you played, and then maybe you came back with Conquest, maybe you came back with Awakening without playing the other games in between, then I imagine that stuff like this is very jarring. You know, because we didn't get New Mystery. If we had gotten New Mystery, I feel like people wouldn't be so taken aback by this. It's very clear that the developers intended for you to pick up the pace this time around on Lunatic Mode. And I, I think this map is a perfect example of that sort of thing. Because imagine how much worse this would be if I was trying to do this late into the game. Ignatius starts over there unpromoted, everything around him is promoted, and can one-round him, you know, it, uh, that sounds like a mess. I don't know, what are your guys' experiences with this map? Like I say, I don't really remember it too well. I very rarely get Ignatius, and I, and just for the record, I haven't played Fates that many times. Like three, probably like three and a half, counting this playthrough. And I'd be curious to see where things get difficult for people. 
Like, wh where were your troubles with this map, I guess? Anyways, not too bad, I don't feel. One thing I will say about Conquest as a whole is that it really rewards you for using Azura to your best ability. You can see where getting Ignatius would be nigh impossible without Azura as a songstress. And I know a lot of people like to reclass her, which is... It's in good fun. Like, believe me, there's very few things funnier than Berserker Azura running around okoing every single possible enemy. That is a good time. That's a great old time, don't get me wrong. But Conquest is very much a game that expects you to use all of your resources, I feel. And there's very few resources that could be more powerful than a dancer. In most games. In most games. Olivia kind of sucks, but <laughs> that's, that's not really her fault. It's more a circumstance of the game itself. Tethys isn't that great either. But Azura, oh my gosh, she's probably... I don't know if I want to say she's the best dancer ever, but she is probably like number two. She's probably either the best dancer ever or the second best dancer ever. And that is including broken beasts like Raisin when he's transformed, Raphael, Layla, Sylvia, Sylvia's kid, <laughs> whose name I can't remember because she's not Layla. So yeah, if there was one tip I could give, it's to people who still have Azura as a songstress. It would be to look out for opportunities to use her dances uh, for things other than just getting more kills. That would be the biggest tip I could give, I think. It is important to consider all the options that you have with a character like that, and not just the and not just the most freaking one, I guess. Let's wrap this up. And I'm actually glad, because we'll probably see more of Benny. That dude is such a beast. I can't believe I like Benny more. <laughs> I already liked him. If you guys thought I was joking about that, no, no, I do like Benny. But now he's just even better in my mind. Can you believe that? Can you believe that artwork of it? Man, I can't get that out of my head. Just such a cool, he's such a bro. Such a bro, man. And he has a really kick-ass ability too, so. In that sense, I do wish that I would've used him because I can see like a great knight Benny kicking some serious ass. Get him wary fighter, of course, from the general class. But if he's a great knight, he could be out in the middle of everything like a commander of some kind. Just like intimidating all of the enemies into not dodging. I assume that's what the uh, implication is, right? Like, he's so scary that the enemy's knees are, like, shaking. <laughs> so they can't move around very quickly. Come on, how can you not like a character like that? That's all I want to know. Young man, you saved us. If there's anything I can do to repay you... Thanks. Thanks. We all owe you our lives. No, no please don't thank me. I just did what anyone would have done. <laughs> you impressed me, son. You developed great strength. See, look at that. Come on. What do you mean by that? <clears throat> I'm not strong. Oh, come on, Ignatius. You've got like 35 strength. He really does struggle with his self-confidence a whole lot, huh? I imagine that probably gets resolved in some of his support lines, though, right? I would imagine, because this guy, like I said, he's, he's a good kid. He's a good kid. Not necessarily like, talking about gameplay, but I'm just talking about in general. He's, he's a good guy. After all, he was willing to fight off that whole army by himself. Don't think that would have went too well, even if he had to use that offspring seal he was just carrying for some reason. Maybe that was his keepsake. <laughs> that was his father's keepsake. Son, if ever you find yourself in a position where you need to defend a village from 20 invaders, I want you to carry this seal. And I like to imagine he just didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> or maybe he did, and he just realized it was the only thing that his father had ever given him, and would be destroyed if he chose to use it. I would have died had you not come to my rescue, father. I'm a damn shame standing beside someone as formidable as you. <gasps> Ignatius, no! Father. Father, as long as I'm at it, I need to speak my piece. Hmm. Please, son, there's no need. Yes. Yes, there is. You've got to let me join your forces. I'll never be the man you are unless I get the right kind of training. See, this is what I'm saying, though. He has no self-confidence, but he does have the right mentality. He's just, he's blocking himself, basically. Because everything wrong with him is all mental. And I can, I can understand that. It is something that a lot of people I know have struggled with. It's something that I have struggled with myself. So that's, I, I can definitely sympathize with Ignatius here. Or else I'll never be anything but a lily-livered fool. What? A lily-livered fool. You fools! But son, you're still so- I'll help you! I'll help you, father. I swear I can. You kept me so well protected in the deep realms. But I must learn to get protection. I can't hide behind my father forever. Oh. No, oh, alright. I'll agree, Ignatius. But only to show you what your dad's life as a knight is really like. I'm not half as brave as you think. I just have a taste for war. Thank you. Alright, so if Leo would have been the best main protagonist, 
can we all at least agree that a game where Benny is the lead would be pretty cool too? Come on now. <laughs> this guy is an awesome dude. Such a badass. Thank you, Father. I won't let you down. One day I'll be a great hero like you. I'll work hard. I'll pay attention. I want to be just like you, Father. Is that so? Is that so? No need for that, son. I'm proud of you just as you are. It's so, so wholesome. <laughs> Anyways, guys. That is that. And with two defenders now complete, Ignatius now recruited, I am going to call it here. So, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. I'd really be interested to hear other people's experiences on that map as well. Because it is, like I said, it's very infamous. It's very infamous. You don't have to go too far to find somebody bringing up Ignatius, uh, Ignatius' recruitment as a late chapter, as one of the hardest chapters. So I'd be curious to see how other people approach it. Curious to hear about that. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Leave a like if you do, and see you then. Peace.